Hello, I'm Kit Darby, President of Air Inc. We're glad you're here today. Today's program is sponsored by ATP, Airline Transport Professionals. Today we're going to cover the current airline pilot job market and how you can best enter that market and become a professional pilot. There have been a lot of jobs in the last couple of decades. We had a peak before 9-11 with 19,000 jobs in a single year. But one thing is clear from this chart that airline pilot hiring is up and down, it's cyclic. Even after 9-11 and one of the worst times in our industry, there were still nearly 5,000 jobs in the year right after 9-11. Today we've had last year a pretty good year, 13,200 positions. This year forecast around 7,500 or 8,000. A lot of jobs. This table shows that the jobs have really cycled up and down and the jobs at the major airlines which are the best career positions. You can see back in 93 we had under 500 and by 1999, 5,000, and 2003, back down to 500. This job market is always up and down. It's like shark's teeth. Going to be up and down, has been, and always will be. June hiring summary, 512 jobs in the month of June. Um, year to date, in 08, we've had 5,061 openings. Again, a pretty good year. Uh, not as good as the best, but not a zero year. Here's a chart that shows the hiring trends over the last 12 months. It has been trending down slowly. Uh, credit situation and of course the housing market in the U.S. affecting the plans of the airlines. One of the questions would be if it was going to be a, a down period, would you want to start your training during a down period? And actually the answer is yes because training takes time. Building experience necessary to get the job takes time. If you start at the peak, you're going to be ready in the valley. If you start in the valley, you're going to be ready at the peak. That's the opportunity that you have today. You definitely want to start training in a down period to be ready for the upturn. Looking at the factors that drive the hiring, equipment growth is the main factor. We get more airplanes, we fly those planes. That's the main th reason that you're looking for additional hiring in the future. The U.S. fleet is projected to rise from 6,900 aircraft to almost 12,000 aircraft by 2026. That's a 73% growth. This factors out airplanes that are retired and replacement airplanes. This is an actual increase in the total number of airplanes flying. The world fleet, by contrast, is going to go from 18,000 aircraft today to 36,000 aircraft by 2026, a 100% growth factor. Again, pilot jobs will follow these aircraft increases. Typical airline pilot works 15 days a month, 15.2 to be exact. By most people's comparison, an average person working a 9-to-5 job works 22 days a month. So working 15 days is an advantage. Now, I'm not claiming that it's an 8-hour day because it's not. It's typically a 10- or 12-hour day, but you get your work done in 15 days and you have 15 days off. Load factors, of course, are booming. If you've tried to get on an airplane recently, you realize the airlines are doing an excellent job of filling their planes using them more hours per day utilization, which requires more pilots, and putting more passengers on them is an additional way that the airlines increase their revenue. As far as how many jobs go with each airplane, here's showing that our non-jet regional carriers have about three and a half pilots per plane, whereas our large passenger carrying airlines that fly internationally fly and have about 12 and a half pilots per plane, a big difference. In fact, 747s at United Airlines, 747-400s that fly flights of 12 to 14 hours or more, have 16 crews, 32 pilots per plane. So every time we see a big airplane go by, especially one flying internationally, that can be 20, 30 jobs at a time. And many of those airplanes are on order. The regional jet forecast is robust. We have currently about as many airplanes being delivered as were previously forecast. We got a lot more after 9-11. After 9-11, the big airlines shed their shorter, thinner routes, and the little airlines, smaller ones, really boomed. They grew 30, 35 percent a year for four years. Now, our business has been growing for the last 20 years about 5 percent a year, a little bit less in hard times, a little bit more in good times. It's been doing that for a long time. Odds are it's going to keep doing it. So just because we have a downturn doesn't mean that it's going to go down forever. Matter of fact, downturns are always followed by upturns. Your career planning should take that into account. If you're learning to fly, you're not available for employment, it's a great time to be doing it during a down period. If you'll be ready then with training and experience when the upturn comes. Remember the pilots hired at the beginning of an upturn are most likely to avoid furlough and have more rapid promotion than those hired at the end of an upturn. The question is, can we simply work the pilot more to cover the incre increased aircraft and utilization? And the answer is no. The maximum hours a pilot can work, a thousand hours 
a year. If you divide that by 12, it's 83 hours. Many pilots are already working close to that. So you can't dramatically increase the utilization in order to cover the additional flying of the new airplanes and the increased utilization. Here's a chart that shows our baby boomers, 13 years of our population that comprise over 33% of our population moving into the prime spending years and they have a big appetite for the demand for our commodity. They don't get in a camper or a Winnebago and go to the beach on vacation. They get in an airplane and go to Europe. They get in an airplane and go to the Caribbean. So these people demand our services for both business and pleasure travel. You've got to look at this chart with me. The orange airline profits, the blue pilot hiring. And there is a one-to-one -one relationship. When the airlines make money, they hire pilots. When they don't make money, they don't hire pilots. You need to look at that. What we're looking for is a profitable industry. The typical corporate pilot flies 20 or 30 hours a month. The typical airline pilot flies 80 hours a month. That's building experience up to four times faster. So if you really want to be a corporate pilot, a great way to do that is to get in and fly at the airlines for a short time, make captain, get some experience, and then you have the total time and the pilot and command experience to go and fly anything, anywhere. Fractional operators are hot. Fractionals are an arm of corporate aviation. It's like timeshare on an airplane. They have uh, six of them, four of them hired in June, 84 pilots. Now, normal hiring, if you took a 25-year career, 4% of the pilots would be hired each year. If it was a 30-year career, 33.3%. Look at the percentages of pilots that have been hired at the fractional carriers over the last couple of years. 24% in 05. How long would it take to make captain if they're hiring 24% a year and half the pilots are captains? It's only going to take a couple of years to make captain. A very exciting segment. They had no furloughs now. They had no furloughs after 9-11. They're growing and hiring lots of pilots. National carriers, 38, eight of them hiring in June. They have 26,000 pilots, 2,312 2, aircraft. And again, they've been hiring very, very robust. This segment has hired more pilots every month for seven years. This is the most active segment. It is the place you're most likely to enter the market after initial training. Only 236 on furlough, which is less than 1%. National carriers have all CRJs and ERJs. You look at the bottom there, it's their future. And it's probably your future as well. Major airlines, these are career positions, places you could stay for sure. Now realize that national carriers have excellent wage and benefits for their captains. If you make captain in two or three years, starting captain pay is like $60 an hour. That's a pretty fair income. And by the time you make senior captain, pay equals 100, 110,000 a year. So to say that you can't make a career out of flying smaller planes is incorrect. You might get a better career flying bigger planes, but certainly 100,000 a year flying a regional jet is an excellent job. Okay, major airlines compensation at the top companies, which were American, Delta, United, ranged about seven to $10 million. In fact, UPS and FedEx got nice raises, and now UPS is the top paid airline in the country with a 35-year career value of $14.2 million. They have excellent pay and benefits, regardless of what current pilots might tell you, if they're making a little less or working a little harder or have less of a retirement, these are the current values. These are excellent values. The career has great career value. Career value being the sum of the wages, the benefits, and the retirement program through your lifetime. Don't just look at the wages. Pay hour grid here shows that you're gonna work about 80 hours a month, like we said earlier. Now, it means you're on duty 160 and away from home 240 to 320, so you're doing plenty of work for your pay, but your actual pay hour is about 80 hours a month. What you don't realize in the, in the pay situation, you get a W-2 each year and that's, your, that's what you earn, that's what you would tell somebody you earned. But what you don't realize is that for every dollar you make, because of the excellent benefit and retirement programs, there's another dollar in benefits and retirement. So if a guy's making 100, it's worth two. If he's making 150, it's worth three. If he's making top pay right now is about 250, it's worth a half a million dollars a year at the very top of the career. So when you have to ask yourself if you were to invest in flight training, spend 60, $70,000 for initial training, where would the payback be? The payback could happen very, very quickly. If you're making 250 a year, how long, long does it take to pay back 70? Not very long, just a few months. Now, of course, in the beginning, you don't start out making that, and there's almost an apprenticeship-type atmosphere at the regional carriers where you work long hours for low wages. But you do that for the opportunity to fly the bigger planes to the faraway places and eventually make excellent wage and benefits and have a good company-paid retirement.